Hi, this is Chica. You're watching Born to Light TV show. The Orlando Museum of Art recently held its grand opening of the Art of the Motorcycle Exhibit. Based on the landmark exhibition that opened in 1998 at the Guggenheim Museum, the Art of the Motorcycle explores the motorcycle as both cultural icon and design achievement and offers a thought-provoking challenge to conventional assumptions about art and popular culture in the modern age. It is organized in association with the Solomon R. Guggenheim Foundation in New York, showcasing 80 historic and contemporary motorcycles each exceptional example was selected based upon the criteria that considered technical innovation, aesthetic excellence, and cultural significance. Starting with examples produced in the 19th century, the exhibition shows how the motorcycle emerged as an icon of our time. Born to Ride's Bruce Berman visited during the grand opening and found out how this great exhibit came into creation. Hi, I'm Bruce with Born to Ride TV and I'm here in Orlando at the Museum of Art at one of the most magnificent exhibits anybody in the motorcycle industry can see. I'm here with Ed Youngblood, uh, who is the curator of this national tour, and we are pleased to be here. Uh, this exhibit is just absolutely art and beauty. Uh, we have some of our beauty behind us, uh, and the rest of it is all motorcycles. Uh, Ed, welcome. You have done such an outstanding job on this exhibit. I have to compliment you. Uh, tell me a little bit about the exhibit, how this whole thing came about. Uh, I know we started in 98 at the Guggenheim, uh, and here we are in Orlando, and this may be the last time anybody sees this in the United States. But tell me a little bit about That's right, Bruce. The exhibit was conceived by Thomas Krenz, who is the uh, director of the Guggenheim Museum. He is a rider himself, always loved motorcycles, and years ago thought there should be such an exhibit. Finally got it organized in 1989 at the Guggenheim Museum in New York. It was an absolute sensation. Since then, it's gone to six facilities around the world. It's been in Europe, it's been in Las Vegas, it's been in Memphis, and now it comes to Orlando. But, uh, I just have to, I mean, I've walked around. There are 79 of the most magnificent motorcycles I have ever seen. This is a tribute to you, and I have to tell a little bit about you. You have served better than 25 years as head of the American Motorcycle Association of America. You're now actively involved in the Antique Motorcycle Association. Right. Uh, your life has basically been motorcycles, and we are absolutely pleased to have you here. Tell me a little bit more. Tell me who Ed is. I, I know we have all these beautiful girls around you, and you're smiling having them here. Yeah. Uh, can we create a show with them? This oh, is absolutely, dream yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've spent my life with motorcycles. I got my first bike when I was 14. As you say, I was with the AMA for about 28 years. Uh, retired from there in 1999. I uh, was hired as an independent contractor to help out with the Guggenheim exhibits and I've worked in one capacity or another with the last uh, four exhibits. Been the chief curator on the last two exhibits in Memphis and here in Orlando. Now one of the things I noticed were these bikes were all donated, they're on loan. How complicated a project is that? Getting, ranging for these bikes to come from all over the country and all over the world for that matter. It takes a lot of time on the telephone. Uh, first of all, you need to know the uh, people that own them. You've got to network with them. I have a uh, assistant curator or a co-curator named Peter Gagan, who is the president of the Antique Motorcycle Club of America. So he's invaluable as a resource. And it takes about a year, about a year of work contacting people to put together an exhibit like this. And of course, as you point out, it just plain could not exist without the lenders, the owners of these machines that are happy to put them on display for the public. Now, I mean, this is one of the best exhibits I've ever seen. I know when it leaves here, we probably will never see the likes of it again. I have to ask you though, what's your favorite bike? Oh, well, that's, that's really, uh, I can never answer that very well. In the early machines, I love the Henderson 4, the 1912 Henderson 4. You get into the more modern bikes, and I have a real hard time. It's a toss-up between the Britain and the uh, MV Augusta F4. Now, you and I talked earlier, and uh, I openly admitted that I happen to like the Aerial Square 4, and here is one of the original Aerial Square 4s, I believe in 1932. 33, yeah, 33. Very, very early one. Mm -hmm. And um, 
but then as you go around, uh, just to fill people in, one of the first motorcycles here is, of course, the steam engine. Uh, mm -hmm. Almost looks like a unicycle, if you will. Well, it was built on one, yeah, by Lucius Copeland, uh, and uh, built a steam engine, mounted it on a star bicycle frame, and that was one of the very early uh, motorcycles in the world. Now, another bike that I noticed here as we first come in is one of the original Harley Davidsons that's on loan from uh, Dale from the Wheels of Time, yes. and which is a magnificent bike. And as you progress around, I see a motorcycle from uh, Daimler, which is now right. Mercedes-Benz. That's right. Uh, Indian motorcycles galore, Harley mm -hmm. Davidsons galore. Uh, and then the last bike on this exhibit happens to be a Honda Rune. The Rune. And yeah. for those of you who have never seen a Honda Rune, uh, this is a factory motorcycle that looks like it was a total custom build, but it is a production motorcycle. Uh, and all I have to say is you have made this exhibit truly what it is designed to be. Oh. It shows what the art of the motorcycle is and how motorcycles fit into society and I have to compliment you. Now, Thank you. once again, I'm gonna ask you the question. This is Catherine, uh -huh. this is Heidi, this is Alyssa, this is Nicole. What's your next show? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to comment on that. You mentioned that this may be the last one. The fact is, there isn't a plan for the future. Uh, no one knows if there will be another art of the motorcycle. So I would say uh, people should take the opportunity. They should see this one while they can. There may be another museum come along that will want it and we may reassemble it, but for right now, this may be it. And this is at the Orlando Museum of Art and it runs here through July. Uh, come on over, it's open seven days a week. It is an absolutely phenomenal exhibit. Uh, for those of you that want to ride your bikes over here, there's plenty of motorcycle parking. Uh, the people are as courteous as can be. Once again, Ed, you've done a fantastic job. What's your favorite TV show? Born to Ride. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back with a detailed look of some of the bikes on display at the Art of the Motorcycle exhibit right after these short messages. Now sit back and enjoy just some of the wheeled treasures now on display for a limited time at the Art of the Motorcycle exhibit at the Orlando Museum of Art.